this. Right, so we'll chat through this. So this was the original video, so this was kind of new as you are right now before we change anything. So the first thing you ever see is quite a big splash as you're taking that kind of breath. We see that kind of scissor kick, that like splaying out. You can see a little bit, it's basically just more and off balance so that as you're turning to take that breath, the legs kick out to try and keep you balanced. So we want to try and ultimately learn how to stay balanced so that we don't have that kind of offset in the legs. I mean, your stroke timing there is really good. So we see that both hands still in front of your head as you come in. Yeah, you can just see it any time you take that breath on the, on the right. Because you're breathing every two, we're kind of losing that balance quite regularly. I mean, your turn to breathe position is really good. One goggle in the water, not really lifting the head too high. Arms recovering quite nicely. Hand empty is pretty good. And your rotation as well is pretty good. I mean, this arm swings a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But not really an issue. It's probably just meaning you're not breathing that side. It does enter a little bit further over though, which we didn't really discuss in the session. Yeah, breathing's good. Would it possibly be that there's not enough rotation in On that left side? On the left side. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Although I think as we said, which we'll come on to, is just that tendency to have that slight kind of lordosis in the lower back. Mm -hmm. So there's it's kind of difficult to rotate together because there's that kind of block um, there. And that's generally just getting the right muscles to keep that. I do they want to see that back being quite flat because you can just see how there's that kind of arch. arch yeah. um, and it's probably a combination of quite tight through hip flexors which puts a little bit kind of pull on the hamstrings and lower back, but also probably quite tight in the shoulders, which we kind of discussed. Um, and you kind of see here, it's quite a few frames that we go to. You know, I mean, it looks like a long time. It's it's milliseconds in reality before that hand comes in. So it's, it's almost like we've got like a, a kind of catch up stroke, which isn't necessarily a bad thing um, into that position. I mean, one thing I think that would help you that we didn't really discuss is just looking that a little bit further down. Yeah. I think because you're looking, it could be just the way you do it in the pool, but I think lowering that head down probably towards where the kind of treadmill starts here will just help bring those legs a little bit higher. Yeah, probably my head is like that in the pool as well. Yeah, That's it's worth fun. worth playing a little bit with dropping that head. Generally speaking, if someone's body position is low, adjusting head position is usually a good start point um, from that. As I say, here's not a bad position. I mean, you're getting propulsion from this, this R. And because the timing's good, this is maybe that like, it's maybe too good where we've got that dead spot, which I think mm -hmm. is what's causing you to go off balance. It's just because there's a point where nothing happens, so there's time for everything to kind of almost just lose that ability to hold the posture and hold position. Um, and then what from that, what happens is you go off balance, you have to correct it, and then the next stroke's kind of compromised. Maybe that's so, yeah, as we're kind of saying with that position, I say timing's good, which is a good start. I think part of the issue that we're seeing there is just the inability to rotate that shoulder at the front of the stroke. So you kind of get to here and you can kind of see like the, the upper back muscle bulging, like the traps and kind of connecting into the lats here. Like it's under a lot of strain here, just mm -hmm. probably just lacking a little bit of that um, flexibility to get into. Because ideally what you want to see here is, you know, that position there, the depth's probably all right and you use your hand here. So you're in not a bad position, but what happens is because that shoulder doesn't rotate as well internally so we don't see that shoulder being free mm -hmm. so what happens is there rather than rotating the shoulder you then start to pull the elbow backwards and then you start to use like the stabilizers of your neck and all that muscles and even a bit more of the traps where if we can get that shoulder rotating what we should see is like closer to that position ideally getting you kind of close to this kind of vertical forearm position and then that's where you're going to generate more or be able to generate more power and press more water back where you can kind of see the arm it just it pulls through and I think it's definitely getting into that mindset of we want to press ourselves forward rather than pull our arm back so I think if we can get that shoulder rotating and doing some mobility to get that shoulder loose and free so it just it rolls into that position then you're in the position here with mm -hmm. the elbow being high you can actually push forward rather than slip back and um, you can kind of see a little bit there as well where um, a little bit arch in the back mm -hmm. legs are sitting a little bit deeper which is something we want to correct as well your breathing's generally good. Maybe exhaling a little bit too much the last minute there. Yes, there's a little bit of a breath hold there. Where we want to make we're seeing loads of bubbles, which happens as you turn to breathe here. So you want it to be a bit in like Yeah, see so how it's just like you're kind of turning and it's some of the issue when you're breathing too uh, all the time where it's like 
trying to get that breath out before the next breath. But I think it's kind of you're trying to breathe, take a breath in, and then hold, and then you go as you're turning to breathe, where we want to be. So that, that turning to breathe is just an inhale, mm-hmm. not a because you can kind of just see that amount of exhale yeah. there. We can just get used to that. It's, I mean, it's not a big issue. You're generally breathing well, but uh, that'll be, help you stay relaxed and probably yeah. maybe why you feel you get your breath a little bit quicker. So when you start trying to swim a little bit faster. Uh, again, you can kind of see here, see there's a little bit of kind of pressure through the lower back, just that kind of dimple mark there. It's just a sign that that kind of lower back is under a little cool. bit of strain. Um, and I think that's where we've got to just try and get this pelvis tilted forward a little bit more or tilted back a little bit more and um, so we keep that back straight and I think that's just learning to engage the right muscles pulling the kind of abdominals forward so that we don't naturally and it's probably come from just doing a lot of um, bike work over the last few months where that hip flexor is a little bit tighter and uh, there it's obviously an issue we need to keep working on anyway um, certainly for swimming we want to keep that you know almost like you're trying to be a surfboard and you're flat on top of the water um, and it helps rotation so i think there's a little bit with that back being a little bit rotated or the, the hips being a little bit rotated as you're trying to rotate mm-hmm. you're kind of restricted because you're kind of already kind of putting a little bit of pressure in the lower part of the spine so i think if we can get that flat and get the hip turning better um it'll get rid of that off balance position as well um, yeah, we spoke a little bit about the ankle mobility. There's definitely a little bit of like there. You're creating, you're creating drag with your feet. A little bit of no ankle mobility. Sorry, yeah, lack of ankle mobility. <laughs> um, but it's trying to get that ankles. Like, ideally, we would see that almost ankle being flat, like it's a fin. Mm-hmm. Ideally, but it's a trade off because if your ankle mobility is that good, you're probably going to get loads of lower limb injuries as you start running, just because you haven't got that rigidity. We need a yep. balance, but. A little bit more range in that ankle movement. I think the skill is always about can you flexible uh, have flexible ankles when you swim, but then create rigidity when you run, and it's getting that balance between. But by getting that foot a bit more pointed backwards or a little bit more kind of flexibility, they'll sit a little bit higher in the water. So rather than when you kick down, or rather than kicking down, you'll actually kick and push yourself forward. But the reality is that your kick's going to not give you too much propulsion, even if it was good. It's probably a couple percent of your overall speed. And kicking more with your ankles like that's probably going to make you slower and just more tired. Yeah. You probably find if you just did just kick on its own, you probably start going backwards, and that's probably just because your uh, ankle mobility is not there. So I think there's a bit of working on it, trying to get your ankles and your feet working so they're sitting a little bit higher in the water. But as that starts to get an issue, as you start getting tired or working on other parts of the stroke, put the pool boy in, let the legs come up, and focus on rotation and what we're doing with the front part of the stroke. You can see that bit when it goes off balance. Just mm-hmm. you can just see the dead Stay spot because it kind of you turn, yeah, and then you go off balance. It's like you kind of like initially it's fine, and then because there's not another stroke happening soon enough, that it's like that dead spot. Just like oh, I go off balance, and it's mm-hmm. almost like you're falling. If you think it's ultimately swimming is about trying not to fall, it's like as we start to fall, the legs are kind of stopping that, and it's like you put your foot forward. You know, if you're running down a hill, it's yeah. like that tendency to want to break. That's kind of what's happening with uh, with the stroke just now. And you can kind of see, as I say, when we do it, it's like milliseconds in the frame. It looks worse. It's like nothing, nothing. And that's the bit where you're falling in the water because you're not actually propelling yourself forward. So this arm's pushing down. I mean, it holds you there. It is creating stability. but it's, And it might come from doing too much of like catch-up drill, too much pause-type drills, which is the issue sometimes with doing those drills is that they create problems. Mm-hmm. Until you can get the stroke down, I think they're good. Until you, if you can get someone to work on that to get the stroke rhythm and the stroke timing better. But when you start having that pause, we need to then nudge that uh, timing of the stroke up a little bit and see so we don't end up with this. But ideally, we want to get this hand in that bent elbow position just in front of your head as this one comes in. So the hand's coming in and you're already pushing forward. Okay. Where to Schneider, there's that tendency to have that arm straight as the arm comes in. Yeah. And then it's like an extra point of the stroke. And I definitely think it's just a little bit about making it, trying to make the stroke too mechanical rather than free flowing. Yeah. So I think just, you know, so we'll see that in the other videos that we take. I mean, you can see your left arm comes out quite a bit. I mean, that's putting quite a lot of load through the, the shoulder here. You can kind of see just like kind of there. It's under quite a lot of strain. The muscle's bulging out there just because it's under tension. Um, and that's partly because this arm is probably a little bit too far outwards here. Okay. Whereas I think if we bring that arm 
inwards just a little bit. I mean, ideally you want to see that hand somewhere close to the shoulder, maybe not as exaggerated as that, but something like that, where your bent elbow and the hand comes inwards just a little bit. I say we don't want to come into a crossover or sweeps underneath, but by bringing that hand in, you're in line with that shoulder. Yeah. So it becomes more like a position you'd be in for doing like a bench press okay. rather than being way out wide out here because that starts to work different muscle groups. Yeah. They're not really that strong, certainly not in swimming. I mean, you could argue that, you know, the fingertips are spaced out. Some people will query that. It's, yeah, it can become an issue having a bit of space between the fingers and thumbs. Thumb will create a bit of drag. Okay. But for most of us, it's probably not the biggest thing we can focus on. You know, if we need to get point something of a second off, then yeah, it's a big issue. But for most of us, it's um, not really going to be a big factor if our legs are sinking. Mm -hmm. But yeah. being mindful of, again, for me, there's not a right and wrong. It's keeping your hand relaxed. And bringing that thumb in a little bit will will help. But okay. um, yeah, you can get caught up in all those things too much. And it's a small return in reality. But yeah, you can kind of just see that left arm presses out a little bit too far. You can see the breathing as well, where it's like, yeah. And you breathe out just as you turn to breathe. So the thing I think we said just through in the pool was just bring in this hand position. Just put a wee line there just to get an idea of them. So if we're there to schnau, I think we want to come in just a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that just a little bit deeper is going to allow that because we've not got the mobility. Now, ideally, we'd want it to be about there. That's about right, ideally. But because we can't mobilize that shoulder enough to get that elbow high, we're going to press down to get that position. So I think we're better to come in a little bit deeper and start the stroke first and start the stroke a little bit earlier, which then also will increase your stroke rate without actively trying to swim or increase your stroke rate. Just because you get into that position a little bit earlier and then you're in the position to generate propulsion. Whereas if that arm starts to be able to mobilize and get the shoulder rotating, you'll get into that position a little bit higher up, which allows you to generate a little bit more propulsion. Yeah. But I think until we've got that mobility, we're going to be better going that a little bit deeper. And same with both sides, I think. I mean, you naturally started doing it, and when your stroke rate went up. I mean, there's actually not bad. And again, it's probably more like, it's not even necessarily the arm being deeper, it's just the hand being a little mm -hmm. bit deeper. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, it's very small in reality. It's just that a little bit deeper is going to help open up that shoulder better. Okay, it's definitely not bad. Swimming, swimming's good. It's just these little adjustments to be more efficient. So if we look at this video, so this is after we kind of had a chat and we tried to work on getting our whole body quite flat. Um, I'm trying to bring the legs up a little bit higher and then going a little bit deeper with that hand empty. So if we have a look here. Yeah, see that's better there. And see how you're now starting to generate that propulsion mm -hmm. there a little, little bit earlier. And the big thing we were kind of trying to address, I mean, the legs are, could be a bit better, but they're okay. We're not seeing that like scissor kick out so much. I mean, there's definitely a little bit where you bend the knee a little bit more, but there's not the same off balance position as we've seen with, with previous. And I say that position there is really, really good. I say the only thing that makes that better is if that elbow is slightly yeah, further forward. forward. Yeah. But that's one that we can work on. But that position is much, much better. And I think we're going to see you generate a little bit more propulsion. So it might be a little bit more costly energy wise initially, but I think that's just from you're so used to that kind of almost like dead spot where you kind of relax and then generate power. So that slight increase in the turnover is going to be a little bit more costly energy wise, but ultimately it's going to allow you to maintain the faster speed rather than constantly slow down, accelerate, slow down, accelerate. And if we have a look from above, so this is trying to think about keeping our hips nice and high, keep our legs nice and high. I mean, there is definitely a little bit of rotation we could be doing on that left side. We do see it's a little bit less so there, which ties in with why that arm has to swing a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, doing a little bit of breathing on that left side probably wouldn't do you any harm just now. I mean, there's still more, and I don't want to give you too many things to think about, but there's still a little bit more power you can generate at that back end of the stroke. But I think if we start focusing on that just now, we're going to see the pause get worse, yeah. usually, I think. So I think we're better to get the dead spot out first, get that rhythm, get that timing better, then add, add that back end of the stroke thereafter. So if you try and do this now, you're probably just going to end up with that left arm being out for a little bit longer. Um, and then see the sidekick position come back again.
There's a, still a few strokes here where we go with balance. But it's much better there. See how it doesn't quite kick out so much on every breathing stroke? Yeah. It's definitely better there. And this is the time of your stroke, but it just looks like there's a little bit more rhythm with it. So I definitely think doing a little bit with the tempo trainer and just a little bit faster than you do just now. So we need to kind of quantify the stroke rate here. Um, but just nudging it up two or three strokes per minute faster is probably going to be sufficient. Um, and then spending some time working on it and just building up that repetition uh, of the stroke. I mean, you were actually swimming slightly quicker here than you were the first video as well, 133 pace. There's still that wee bit of a dead spot as you breathe. But it's nowhere near as much. I mean, if we go to time coming in. Yeah, you can see the legs kind of kick out a little bit. And I definitely think that's still more to do with the hip position rather mm -hmm. than anything else. But yeah, I think get, getting that back flat, trying to get that hips as high as we can, trying to get that ankle moving or flexing, or at least keeping the ankles high. Is, is the key initially. It's ultimately get rid of drag before we try and create more propulsion. Let's get rid of the things that are going to slow you down. Then then work on the things that are going to get you faster. Because I think if you get rid of that drag, ultimately you're able to swim faster anyway. Mm -hmm. Whereas to overcome drag, you're going to need more propulsion. Sure. Yeah, I think it's just getting used to a slightly different stroke, a little bit deeper at the front end, working on the mobility of the shoulders. Um, and then building that up, build up repetition on the faster stroke rate. And then potentially working and pushing to the back of the stroke. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. that's good.